Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Matt Nixon, or better known as Junkie X Fashion and Matt Nixon Photography on Instagram. Going to meet up with my homie John right now. Thought, let's take advantage of this perfect opportunity. Let's teach people how to make items float. It's a really big thing you see nowadays on Instagram with the streetwear, everything. You know, you can make literally anything float. We're going to teach you how to do that, and then you guys can take your creativity and go wherever from there. Without further ado, let's go and meet up with the homie John, and let's get this thing started. Well, we made it. Finally made it to the guy's house, hey, John. Hey, hey. Yo, what's your Instagram, brother? At uh, John Perez, underscore in between every single thing. Anyways, we're gonna run to school now. We're gonna teach you guys how to make things flow, right, John? Yeah. That's what we're gonna do. Show them some photography. Let's do it. Let's do it. Okay guys, we're now back at the school. I didn't even know that John doesn't really know how to manually shoot, throw, float things in the air, so I'm gonna be uh, showing him as well and explaining to you guys as well. First things first, you want to change your drive mode to high speed continuous shooting. What's really gonna help you guys with this, let me zoom that out. What's really gonna help you with this is you're really gonna wanna be shooting with a lens that has a low aperture. The lower the better, obviously, because you're letting in more light so you can crank up your shutter speed. The second thing, you're gonna have to have a high shutter speed when you're shooting. You wanna throw something up and be able to catch it floating. Have a nice, not blurred shot. So when you crank your shutter speed up, it makes it a lot darker. If you have a lower aperture lens, the more light you can let in and therefore it makes up for that darker image that you're getting because of the high shutter speed we found a decently nice spot not too bad lighting daylight if you're outside that's gonna be good too because then obviously if you're in good lighting you don't have to crank your ISO up you want to have a lower ISO so you're not getting any grain also if you have a tripod that's obviously gonna help as well if you don't have a tripod higher the shutter speed the better crisp more image you're gonna get without no shake because if you don't have a tripod can't get that perfect stability John you kind of got that we're actually going to show you now what his settings are he's shooting what are you shooting with there John so I'm shooting with a 6d mark Two. And I'm shooting with a 50 mil 1.8 aperture. Let's show them the settings. He's got his uh, down to 1.8. So this is when you're really gonna have to kind of test it out. Try cranking your um, shutter speed up to about a thousand. Let's see how it looks in terms of your darkness. I found something that looks pretty nice here. It's um, He's got a shutter speed at a thousand. 1.8 aperture, 4,000 ISO. Another thing I want to mention, really doesn't matter about your equipment. Um, I used to shoot on a T6i. I'm shooting on a Sony a7R 2 right now. I'm gonna show you a little bit of the difference of his camera and my camera. One thing I forgot to mention is you're gonna wanna shoot on manual focus. So whenever you have your subject and whatever you're shooting and trying to make float, you can put it to wherever you want the shot or the item to be floating, focus on it. And I'm gonna show you, we actually just got our buddy Dylan back. He just came through the school. So we're gonna we're gonna utilize this guy now. Come stand here, Dylan. Hold the phone up, get him to hold it up there somewhere where it looks nice on just the screen. Bit, huh? You're gonna focus it wherever you want the shot to be floating. As you can see, John's got it focused on the phone there now. What Dylan is now gonna do before John starts shooting any photos, but Dylan's gonna bring his hand down and then John, he's gonna toss it up and then John's gonna use the fast shutter speed, continuously take the shots and then hopefully he'll get a nice crisp shot. Good tip for this is, um, and Dylan, especially for you, for the guy that's throwing up the item, don't toss it too high and when you bring your hand down out of the focus spot, barely toss it. That gives it more of a levitating look. Three, two, one, go. did get a nice shot. Phone isn't in perfect focus. What you can do in that instinct, if you have better lighting, well obviously first things first, you can just keep trying and taking the photo, change how high you're throwing it, each different ways you're throwing it. Keep practicing that and you'll, you'll eventually get it. If you have to, open up your aperture a little bit more. I would say no higher than 4.0 unless you have extra lighting or something like that. Okay, so we just got finished shooting. That was a nice little lesson for you, John. Yeah. It was honestly, honestly a nice little lesson for myself. I haven't been out shooting in a little while, so you know, playing with some of the different settings that you guys are gonna see. Gonna toss out a few photos so you guys can see the different settings that we use, see how different things change. Go out there, get creative, go throw some things in the air, take some cool photos, and I hope you guys learned something too. Fun time? Fun time, fun time. Yeah. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Um, my name's Matt, this is John. 
follow him. I'm going to toss up his uh, Instagram as well. Thanks to this guy, Dylan. I might as well shout him out as well. Thanks for him for helping. He actually, we've been sitting here for probably like an hour and a half. But make sure you guys follow me as well, uh, Junkie X Fashion and Matt Nixon Photography. And until next time.